What's going on everyone, it's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed weather forecast for February the 5th, 2022. In today's video, we are talking about a potential winter storm that could bring in some snowfall for the northern tier of the United States with more severe weather possibilities for the deep south with warmer temperatures also advecting within the system making it more concerning as far as severe weather and heavy rain goes now before i do get started i do have a very important announcement to share with you all if you haven't done it already from yesterday I do have a YouTube channel survey that I created yesterday on the 4th of February. This is a very critical, important survey that you all should please take. It doesn't take that long. All you have to do is do the multiple choice questions. There's no right or wrong answer. It lets me know of what you want me to do to improve the channel, my production, uh, my creativity as far as making weather content. So if you haven't already, please do the survey. The more responses we get through June 1st, the more likely it is that I will fix something that really needs to be fixed in the um, for the YouTube channel. So please uh, do the survey after you have watched this video and I'll be able to look at those responses of what you particularly think is best for my channel. All right, there's a link in the description below this video leading to that YouTube channel survey. Okay, so here's a look at the latest European model for February the 6th, 2023 for your Monday morning and we are looking at um, snowfall, rainfall, and thunderstorms if they're going to be a problem out there across the deep south. And speaking of that, they will be an issue by the time we go into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for the deep south as we get a weather system that is going to be moving on by and that's going to destabilize the atmosphere. And so when we go forward into that, we can see by um, Tuesday afternoon, we do got shower chances, part of that weather system that is going to be developing off the New Mexico plateau by Tuesday, and that's going to bring in showers and thunderstorms, and this is going to continue all the way into Wednesday and Thursday. Right now, it does not look to be a huge, significant, substantial, severe weather episode, but nevertheless, we could still see a marginal to slight risk for severe weather across the deep south and the southeast, part of that surface low, which you can see right here. There's your low, there's your cold front, there is your warm front. We got warm air being pulled in from the south off the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to lead to destabilization, moistening of the boundary layer, and that's going to lead to thunderstorm development potentially on Wednesday, mainly into Thursday as well. That system is going to be moving into the upper Midwest by Thursday, bringing some snow chances for northern Illinois, for southern Wisconsin, central and northern Michigan, but there is still quite a bit of the disagreement on exactly where this surface low is going to uh, be headed into, and we'll be looking at the GFS to prove you uh, my point of what we're seeing as far as the, um, the differentials, the uncertainty that remains. So there's your system that's going to be bringing in some showers, some um, strong winds, maybe some severe weather again for the southeast and along that warm front and that warm sector, and and then we might see a reinsert um, or a resurgence of moisture coming around here, part of a secondary low that tries to develop. Um, so we got one perturbation. If we go back here, that first perturbation moves out. And then we got a second perturbation that moves further um, south into the deep south. And then it will curve around part of the main parent low up here, as we see. So by the end of the day, we can see where the surface low is going to be. And again, that is February the 10th through the 11th, where there might be some snow chances and some cooler temperatures that are anticipated and that moves on through by the time we go into the latter part of next weekend, February the 11th, uh, February the 12th through the 13th. So the GFS model, let's take a look at that because again, there is some uncertainty in regards to the numerical forecast on that system. And so let's take this through. First of all, we got a snowstorm that is going to be impacting portions of Hudson Bay, according to the GFS here for Tuesday into Wednesday, February the 7th and the 8th. And then again, we got a frontal system that tries to develop here as indicated on the European. That's not a problem, right? Both of the models do indicate that th that's going to happen. The uncertainty remains in regards to where does the surface low um, uh, move into, right? On the 12Z run, we had this a little further north, 
the model before that it was so it's trending further south according to the last few model runs on the gfs and it'll be interesting if that southerly trend does continue but right now we're going to hang on to snow chances here over um, portions of uh, say uh, wisconsin if you're in central and eastern iowa central and northern missouri if you are in central and northern um illinois like chicago yep you might see some showers and some strong winds coming in out of the north because of that pressure gradient there at 995 millibars we got a cold front here we got a warm front here so we got a pretty well intact warm sector here that might um facilitate some severe weather probabilities here for the deep south but again it's gonna be really limited really limited if anything again maybe a slight risk at the very most i don't want to jump the gun and say oh we're gonna have an enhanced risk for severe weather little too far for that okay there's a little too much uncertainty in regards to that where we would see a more uh, noticeable severe weather event but nevertheless there will be some severe weather it just may not be extremely bad in other words so by friday that system moves through bringing uh, snow and then a second perturbation here again as noted on the european but this is the gfs showing a similar output here with the second energetic um, upper level low pressure system you'll see that here on the jet stream forecast it does bring in some snow chances over the northeast and the great lakes by the time we go into friday into saturday the 10th and the 11th of february and then that moves out and conditions do get a lot better so now how much snowfall are you anticipating in the next 10 days you may be wondering and again why i'm using this is because we're not seeing a huge amount of organized snowstorms so we're just going to kind of bleed this into the 10-day forecast and we can see roughly anywhere between one to three feet of snowfall for the extreme northern cascades there of washington and into british columbia but largely not a lot of snow is anticipated you have really had a huge problem with snow drought concerns here in the northeast and it's going to continue not very much snow on the european mo model fortunately for the people that don't like the snow looks like you're looking good so far but the most snow you might be seeing out of this winter storm for the great lakes would probably be anywhere between three to five inches at the most maybe five inches maybe a little lesser we're not talking about a blockbuster snowstorm by any means. It's just your typical weather system that's going to bring in some, um, some heavy rain, strong winds, maybe some snow, of course, and then maybe some heavier snow up here into southernmost Canada of Ontario and Quebec, where you might see as much as 5 to 10 inches of snow. And then extreme northern Canada, of course, it still snows in mid-February. That's where you might end up seeing maybe as much as 4 to 8 inches of snow. Now, another thing that you all are going to love for the people that don't like the cold weather will be the warmer temperatures. We're going to start seeing spring-like temperatures increase as we go further into February and into March. It is to be expected because we're inching closer to spring. We're coming out of winter. It's a transition period yet again, just like we had in um, October, September, and November. So looking forward here for your temperatures. Say goodbye to the Arctic air if you're in the U.S. That is going bye-bye, um, maybe for a lot of po folks, but it, the extreme northeast, upstate New York, maybe Maine could still hug um, sleet in the single digits there. But if you are in the deep south, like Texas, Oklahoma, you're going to be seeing temperatures in the 60s, 70s. It's going to be really nice. It's going to be mild. You don't need the blankets to keep you warm at night. You don't even need anything as far as the heater so if my voice cracked there i don't know what that was all about but yes the weather is going to be cracked a little bit here for monday and that's going to continue warm air advection look at this 70s maybe close to 80 degrees in southernmost texas and florida while to the north here on tuesday february the 7th it is going to be rather chilly but Definitely not in the single digits. You're going to have temperatures probably in the 30s and 40s during the day with some 20s in the higher elevations of the Rockies, but definitely a lot more milder. Even in 
British Columbia, if you are in, uh, say, Alberta, Canada, if you are in Manitoba, it's going to be pretty mild the further south you go. You can barely see any negative temperatures here on this map, so it's going to be looking really nice. Cold mornings, though, but as soon as you get into the daytime hours, that's when temperatures do warm up. Now, on this weather system, by the middle of the next week or this week, it's going to bring in our usher in some colder air uh, um, aloft, so we're getting some cold air advection. So, very little warming is expected here on Thursday, but once that departs, we should see more seasonal, seasonable temperatures return by next weekend of February the 11th and the 12th, which will be really nice to see, uh, especially since you are already tired of the winter-like temperatures. I mean, I don't live in the Northern Plains, thank goodness, but you know what I'm talking about, right? It, it, it's been cold for uh, so long overall. Maybe it's been above average, but still, that's colder than where I live, right? So, now the jet stream forecast. Why are we going to see this uh, colder air move north? Well, the jet stream is changing, and it's changing in a pretty big way. So let's go forward here. Our first disturbance moves through. That's what's going to trigger in some of the snowfall for the northernmost Great Lakes into Hudson Bay on Tuesday. That moves out. We get a second perturbation here that develops in the Midwest and the Deep South. That is, again, going to be the concern maybe for some severe weather, maybe some um, damaging winds, maybe a ha large hailstone here and there, maybe a brief funnel cloud or two. I'm not going crazy on this severe weather event or whatever you want to call it, not even event at all, just a typical severe weather day for the Deep South. Doesn't look anything out of control just yet, even so this is negative. This is also moving really far, almost directly north. So a lot of the forcing is going to be separating from the instability and moisture here to the south. And that's going to at least limit or put a lid on severe weather intensity as far as that goes. All right, another trough wants to swing through. And this might revigorate something by the latter part of this week into the weekend as that trough is more positively tilted but limited moisture return due to that. And that's probably going to limit some severe weather. But overall, this pattern is really not so much um, northwest. We're not seeing this big trough carving out across the Great Lakes and the eastern U.S. with massive ridging back west. And so that's why a lot of this cold air is going to be really remaining pretty far north up here in Hudson Bay and central and northern Canada instead of it just, um, what do you call it, um, just blasting down from the north, okay? Otherwise, we would see that. But instead, this uh, flow overall is going to be zonal. And in fact, by the end of the period, we might see southwesterly flow here. So warmer temperatures could be um, definitely expected here for the Great Lakes in the eastern half of the U.S., while cooler temperatures return or remain intact over the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast of the United States. Very energetic jet stream. We'll have to keep an eye on how this all evolves down the road as soon as medium range forecasts do begin to capture that. But wow, what a, a pretty phenomenal pattern. Been very lucky to not see big Arctic outbreaks here. You've been seeing a few like the one on Christmas and the one recently, but I'm not, I'm telling you it hasn't been two three four weeks in a row of arctic temperatures right you've had these you, you know i like i mean just quick puffs of cold air it ends warms up and then you get another puff of cold air like every week or something right it hasn't been frequent super intense just been isolated here and there like the northeast arctic outbreak was very isolated so um, to make my point across here is that right now, the pattern does not look to favor huge Arctic air mass uh, problems for the Great Lakes for much of the eastern half of the U.S. anytime soon, as far as my lovely eyeballs can see. And so you could rest easy on the temperatures, but maybe not so much on that rainfall. Let's take a look at the rainfall totals here really quickly on the European model, and we can see... Definitely um, quite a bit of rainfall for portions of the Mislitex and Arklatex region of the U.S. But otherwise, 
much of the country gonna take a good reprieve breather from a lot of stormy weather. The weather seems to be quietening it down a little bit. But who knows how long that will last, right? We have rest of February, we have all March and April, and even into May and June. All right, well, that's going to sum it up for today's video, but don't go anywhere just yet because you have to take, and I would ask you all nicely to please take the YouTube channel survey that I have up here on the screen. The more responses we get, it really means a lot. Because that means I could look over all of these and put an average on what people think of my videos. Do they like them? Why do you guys, you know, like my videos? What makes you want to come back? This and that. You know, make sure you do put your YouTube channel name or your real name, though, when you do sign the form. All right? It doesn't take long. It's free. It really helps out. And I will be collecting all of these responses all the way through June 1st. So get ready. You're going to see a lot of this promoting going on with the survey because this is critically important as it helps out to improve my production for you all that come back every day and watch my videos. All right? That's going to sum it up for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Share, like, and subscribe, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another update on your forecast.